There's an old Russian proverb that says a man should do three things before he dies. Plant a tree, build a house, and father a child. It means the good life is about settling down, planting deep roots, and leaving a legacy. The Russians might just as well have been talking about the pioneers who first settled these West Virginia hills. They didn't have to plant too many trees in the mighty chestnut forests that used to cover the land. But they did fell more than a few to clear their fields and build their cabins. They worked hard to make a living off the land and pass something on to their children. And when you live with hope for the future, you build things to last. That's why Charles Golden Bradshaw's chestnut log cabin still stands to this day, over 120 years since he built it back in the 1890s. It's the oldest building on the grounds of our monastery. Charlie Bradshaw lived here, he labored here, and he died here. They buried him at the top of the ridge. Like so many West Virginians before him, he left a legacy to his family by the sweat of his brow and the work of his hands. This land stayed in the Bradshaw family for generations after Charlie, until a real estate man got a hold of it and sold it to another West Virginia native, Maurice Sill. He liked to call himself an old hillbilly, but Mo bucked all the stereotypes. He was active in the early days of the Peace Corps in India and Pakistan. He was an amateur pilot. He taught rural sociology at Marshall University. And, most fatefully, he married the daughter of a Russian Orthodox priest. He took her faith to heart and made it his own. When Mo and his wife Nadia moved into the old Bradshaw farm, they built a house attached to the log cabin. The cabin they used as a chapel. Charlie Bradshaw would have never guessed it, but he ended up building the first Orthodox church in Wayne County. For over two decades, Mo and Nadia prayed services faithfully in Charlie's cabin on Sundays. Sometimes a priest would come down from New York to serve communion. But Mo dreamed of one day seeing a flourishing Orthodox community right here in rural Appalachia. Most folks wouldn't see much promise in planting ancient Christianity right in the heart of coal country. But Mo Sill was a visionary. He saw things as possible that most others couldn't. In all the 25 years of prayer services in the old log cabin chapel, only one person stuck with Mo and Nadia, old man Charlie a black man from across the river in southern Ohio. Still, Mo never gave up. In the late 90s, he heard of a Russian Orthodox monastery in St. Louis that was looking for a new home. He donated the old Bradshaw farm to the monks, and in the spring of 2000, the Brotherhood of Holy Cross Monastery settled in. When we got here, we thought no one would find us in our little holler, way out wing. But little by little, Men seeking to devote their whole life to Jesus Christ made their way here. Just like in old Russia, lay folk looking for the spiritual support of the monastery were close behind them. Mo lived to see the monastery grow and flourish. He witnessed the founding of a parish church in Wayne to help care for the families drawn to the area by the monastery. By the time he passed away in 2019, he could behold the fruit of his labors the vibrant Appalachian orthodoxy he envisioned all those years before. He was faithful, he persevered, and through his patience and foresight, he left a legacy for his entire community. After almost a quarter century in this place, we're building our own legacy right next to the old log cabin chapel, a beautiful house of God, an enduring testament to the truth of the gospel in wood plaster, and stone. This church sends a clear message to everyone that sees it. It says, make no mistake, we're building to last. Our roots are firmly planted in this place. We're not going anywhere. We're proud to call West Virginia our home. We honor the men who came here before us, men like Charlie Bradshaw and Mo Sill, they lived and died here, and now they're buried in these hills. 
Someday each one of us monks will go with them to our final resting place here in this Appalachian earth. With our life of prayer, work, and worship, and with the beautiful new temple that's now rising at the heart of it all, we continue the legacy those men left to us. But that legacy isn't just for us. It isn't just for West Virginia or Appalachia. It's for all America. We're laying a spiritual foundation for all future generations of Americans to experience the fullness of the ancient Christian faith in their own land and in their own language. Join us in securing the legacy of Holy Cross Monastery. For those who came before us, for those who live today, and for those who are still to come.